I want to talk to someone who's a, an expert with regard to homeschooling uh, legal issues. We at Pacific Justice Institute have defended homeschoolers before. We do it completely without charge all across the country. But we're very grateful to another organization uh, that does work just for homeschoolers, HSLDA, Homeschool Legal Defense Association, and this gentleman who heads it up, uh, Michael Smith. Thank you, Michael, for being on the program. Hey, Brad. Thank you. And, and incidentally, thank you for all the work you've been doing for many, many years. I remember when I think you were working with John Whitehead when I first got involved in defending homeschool families, and you've been at it ever since. Thank you for all your effort. Oh, uh, my pleasure. My pleasure. And I know we had a major case out here uh, a few years ago dealing yeah. with whether or not you could legally homeschool in California without being a credentialed teacher. Uh, we took on, we, we defended the homeschooling program that was challenged. Uh, you folks uh, defended one of the the parents of of the you know one of the homeschooling parents. Correct. And we we ended up having a complete reversal by the appellate court, so that now California is very solid when it comes to the rights of parents to homeschool legally without being a credentialed teacher. And I thought, quite frankly, Michael, I thought, okay, homeschooling big issues in California is pretty much done. We've nailed that that coffin shut. We're protected. And now this ugly monster has come out of the coffin to challenge homeschooling, and it's in the form of pending legislation resulting from this uh, certain incident that happened recently involving a homeschooling family that was uh, uh, very extreme. Uh, First, give us some information about uh, the the legislation, and then we'll talk about how it came into existence. Yes, well... You're right about the case. The case was in 2008 that recognized homeschooling as legal under the private school exemption in California, which is not unusual. There are about 12 states, 11 or 12 states, that recognizing recognizes the legality of homeschooling through the private school exemption. So that's not anything unusual. And the appellate court, as you recall, down there in Los Angeles, you said reverse themselves, which is amazing because <laughs> – yes. How often does that happen? But Yeah, never anyway, in my lifetime. That was, that was the only time in my lifetime. So was, I've never seen it. I've never yeah. seen it before. That, and, I mean, they were unanimous. You remember? It was 3-4 yes. and then against and then 3-4. So that was amazing and, and appreciate all your effort in that. But, anyway, that decision we thought, as you said, would pretty much solidify homeschooling as legal and that we wouldn't have any problems. And we really haven't had any, quite frankly, and. People have been homeschooling with much liberty and freedom, which is the way it should be in California, until the threats that are now coming as a result of this case down in uh, the Turpin family down in Riverside County. And so what we're hearing is immediately the media jumped on this, Brad, as you know, and rather than recognize this case for what it is, which is a case of alleged uh, abuse and neglect, and it sounds like it's very extreme, of course. Right. And if true, obviously this family deserves to be punished. Right. And the There's law no and the law and the law is there to to punish them for it. That's so it's correct. not like we don't have legal remedies for these situations and to hold people accountable. But Michael, there's the threat of legislation uh, resulting from that, you know, terrible incident that we're having to deal with and this threatened legislation that they're talking about uh, which I think has a good chance of getting through in California because of the way the, the legislature right. is so far to the left. I know it. And in my understanding, this legislation, this this proposed discussion of legislation would allow the government to come in to homeschooling families and monitor them just like a, a foster care family. Is that? Yes. I mean, yeah. it, that's part, Brad, that's part of what we heard. Now, we haven't seen anything, but yeah. What they really want and what they're talking about is they want to address what they think is an isolation problem in homeschooling. And I know I've seen interviews you've done on this, and you completely knock it out of the ballpark. This is not about homeschooling, this case. The case in Riverside is about abuse and neglect. Let's punish the parents if, in fact, it's true. And they should go to jail probably for life based upon what we're hearing. But why should we then take that case – and make that a homeschool case because they happened to be a family that had filed their private school affidavit and said they were homeschooling. Why should we punish all the other families in California that don't abuse and neglect their children just because we have isolated situations, which, quite frankly, are inexplicable? Right. I mean, you cannot, 
anticipate something like this happening. As a matter of fact, I argue that you could have all the regulation in the world. You could be coming in these folks' home or have a law that you could enter people's homes, homeschool families, let's say, just because they're homeschooling, unannounced visits, and families like this or situations like this would still exist because they would avoid any kind of scrutiny on their family. So, number one, I don't think any kind of law would affect, have changed what happened here. That's right. number one. Right. Number two, it's not going to have any effect on the families that are not abusing their children, right? Right. So why do we want to do this? Well, I think it's because legislators think they have to fix something. They think it's a problem. But the real issue that's raised its ugly head here is the media. And so the media, I think, really has a bias against parents, at least the yes. interviews I've been doing. Would you agree to that? Oh, yeah, and the homeschoolers. Specifically, yeah, for some reason, I mean, homeschoolers are now evil people. Oh yeah, they're they're and, called they're called depriving their children of of social development. Yeah, uh, so, I call it social infection. Uh, <laughs> so, but that's another topic. Uh, that, that's a good one. So, at any rate, so this discussion or what we're hearing is that there would be some kind of pre-approval before parents could homeschooling. In other words, they'd have to submit their the parents would have to do fingerprint checks. They do background checks, and if they have any prior criminal record or whatever, they wouldn't be able to homeschool. That's one idea. The second would be, let's say you get, you're get you screened, you get through that process, then you would have to agree to allow uh, officials, I suppose CPS workers, to come in your home, maybe unannounced. You'd have to open up your home. They could go through your, basically through your house to make sure you have beds, there's food in the refrigerator. Um, you know, they look at your children, they pull their shirts up, whatever, to find out that you're not actually beating them. Yeah. So. That would be, I think, Brad. Would you agree that would be unconstitutional? Oh, it? oh, yeah, because we're <laughs> we're, we're talking about our, our founding fathers. You know, we they wrote in the Constitution language to prevent the ability for government to uh, to you know enter into your home uh, without a warrant. Uh, a home is a place that's a uh, a protected place that government can't be like the British soldiers were during the Revolutionary War and just come on in whenever they want to. Uh, and yet, that is. That's the talk. That's the rationale. That's the rationale. And it's yeah. extremely dangerous. Hearing. I don't believe homeschoolers shed their constitutional rights simply because they're homeschooling, uh, point one. And then point two, I also see it as extremely illogical when you have public schools, which have a much, much worse track record when it comes to uh, abuse, when it comes to bullying, when it comes to sexual abuse— or sexual activities, uh, uh, drug abuse, I mean, educational in, in, uh, incompetence as far as instruction. They have much, much, much worse statistically. I think it's, it's really uh, very hypocritical and backwards for them to say, oh, we the government need to start uh, giving greater control and taking away uh, control from, from homeschoolers uh, when they are actually statistically doing a superior job to anything in our public school system today. Well, we know they're definitely doing a superior job in terms of academics, right? I mean, our kids, on average, and there isn't any study to the contrary, score higher on average on standardized achievement tests than their public school counterparts, and in many cases, way above. Right. Here's and another thing that really concerns me. We, we're talking about the Fourth Amendment, you and I, and this would be a violation of the Fourth Amendment, these unannounced home visits. Right. Here's another thought. There are Muslims that are terrorists, and they say they're terrorists. But are all Muslims terrorists? According to what Barack Obama told us, that there is no way that America should ever profile or cast any aspersions upon all of the innocent, hardworking, good Muslim families in America today. And I agree with him. Yeah. I, I agree with that. I think right. that's constitutional the right thing to do. Right. But substitute homeschooler for terrorists and Muslim. <laughs> Shouldn't the same thing apply? Yes. And basically what you're asking is saying – Please give homeschoolers the same level of respect that we give to uh, Muslims in this country. And when you word it that way, it's, it's pretty, pretty reasonable. I mean, it's, it's only fair. It's, it only, it's only fair. And I agree with that. I don't think we should, you know, Middle Easterners should not be stopped at uh, train right. stations and before they get on a plane just because they look just like. Be, yeah, just because of color of their skin. You know what or, I'm saying? Right. Nor should homeschoolers, just because they make the decision to teach their children at home and not send them to a government school, right. be profiled and treated differently than any other group of families. And here, here's one other additional one. 
uh, about 50% of the abuse or neglect that takes place with children is in preschool, from zero to preschool age, okay? Right. And actually about 86% of the deaths that occur on an annual basis are in that age group. Right. So that appears to be the children that are most vulnerable to abuse or neglect. Is anybody talking about requiring all parents to submit to these home visits? Right. No, they're not. And uh, they, their their focus and goal is is to to pick on homeschoolers. That's right. It is. That's exactly it, it's, right. This is. I. It is not an accident. Uh, it is an overt attempt to try to intimidate, and to try to control and to 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 threaten people so they won't homeschool. I mean, who wants to do do something that's going to allow the government at any time to come into their house? And if they get away with this, Michael, I'm concerned. California is a bellwether state. If California does this. And, of course, we'll be challenging it, and I'm sure you guys will be challenging it as well. Uh, if, this, if they get away with this uh, and this be, does become law, I am concerned, Michael, that we're going to see this pop up in legislators, legislatures starting with blue states and then the red states across the country. And that's why I think homeschoolers need to look at this very seriously. Uh, it's it's a, a powerful voice in America. Homeschoolers aren't just uh, a few, a few uh, people in the backwoods and, you know, no, they're they're active, they're engaged, and I want them to to keep up with what's going on. I encourage people to go to your website, hslda.org, correct? Thank you, sir. Yes, hslda.org uh, to keep up with, uh, with, with what your organization is doing, and also pji.org, pji.org as well. Thank you again, Michael, for being on the program, and keep up the great work that you're doing Brad, for HSLDA. Thank you, and God bless you, brother. You too. All right, bye now. Bye-bye.